Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. I'm Jonathan. This is Game Dev XR. So, I want to go over how we can create a screen fade using the Oculus Quest because there's been a couple of comments in the Discord about this and how you can actually get it to work since the Oculus Quest doesn't work that well with mobile HDR and that's one of the features needed for the camera camera fade. So, I'm going to show you how we can do it using one of the Oculus nodes provided through the Oculus plugin, which is virtual reality. Chance of you doing VR for the quest, you've already got this enabled, so no worry, don't need to worry about it. What have I got in my scene? That's the thing. So all I have in my scene so far is two levels. One is consisting of the level blueprint or the level. One's consisting of the VR template, which I've just renamed to level one. And then I have level two. I'm just going to use this to switch back and forth so we can set up a screen fade. And to do that, I'm actually going to use an interface. When doing screen fades or anything that's going to be a repetitive thing, it's good to just be able to do it once. So I actually set mine up in my motion controller and then I call it. But before doing that, we're going to need a blueprint that we can use to switch levels. So if I stop switching folders and we go to blueprint class actor. I'm going to call this BP underscore level switch. Let's give that a capital S. I'm going to open this up. Now we need a cube, just something that we can see in the world. Let's scale this down a little bit. So 0.25 should be good. And we're going to need a collision. So I'm just going to use a box collision. Scale this down as well. Just so it's above. That way we know where we've got our little button. Or it's going to act as our button. And then if we go into our event graph, we're going to select our box using on component begin overlap. And what I want to do is I want to set the material to something else so we know that we've actually pressed the button. So I'm just going to make a new material. M underscore button. Base color. Let's give it a red. It's only so we can actually see that we've pressed the button. If the screen fade doesn't work, it's a good way to just debug it. So we've got the cube. We're going to do a set material. Four set cube. Not sure why the why it brings in twice. Okay, cool. So we've got M underscore button. So now it'll switch from white to red when we press the button, which we'll leave up here since we'll be dropping back into it in a bit. So the next step is setting up our our screen fade instance. In our setting up our screen fade interface. If I can say it without stumbling. Right, so I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to blueprints, I'm gonna create a blueprint interface, and we're gonna call this screen fade, screen fade interface. So we know what it is. And in here we need to do a screen we're going to call the first function fade to black. And then we're going to call the next one fade to scene. So just make it easier in a little bit. So now we've got this, we can actually close it. If you're not too sure what an interface is, the best way I can figure out to describe it is kind of like a middleman. So we have this, which can be fired and have a set of custom events in it. So our blueprint switch can actually control this and then trigger it in our character. If you're not too sure, just follow along. It should sort of explain itself. So we've got that. Shouldn't have closed it. We've got that. The next step we need to do is actually set up our screen fade in our motion controller. How do we do this? So first thing we need to do is find some free space. And then we need to go to class settings and add our new interface to our motion controller pawn. So we're going to type in fade or screen fade. Now we've added that in. What we can do is if we actually right click, we can do event and fade. And now we have those two events, which we created on our screen fade, which we can call from anywhere. So we're going to do fade to black and event fade to scene. So we've got these called. We might as well set up our switch to call these. So what we actually want to do is do our fade to black. So if we do our fade to black, because when we press, I'm not used to having Windows grouped up there. I've got to move it. 
when we have our object in the, the scene, once we press it or hover over the top of it, we're going to want to fade the screen to black and then we're going to have to level open it itself. So in our switch, we're going to do a fade, fade to black. And you can see we've got our fade and it says message. We're going to want that one. You can tell you're using the right one because you've got the little, essentially the little message in the top right, the letter. And just for the target, if we hit compile, it won't actually work. We need to get our player pawn. So we'll get player pawn. Now if we hit compile, it'll work. Um, we basically need to set a level. So to do this, I actually prefer making a enum because I can actually just put all the levels in there and then go from that. So if I find it, I don't lose it. There is blueprints and then enumeration. I'm going to call this level names enum. So level names enum. We can open this up and then we can make two. So we've got level underscore all one. We can actually check this in our maps and then level underscore or two hit save and now we're actually going to use this just for our little switch saves having to type it in all the time so we're going to do an open level we're going to plug that into our event fade or at least our interface fade in variables I need to now get that enum so I'm just going to search for enum Level name enum, and we've got it here. Let's call it level names. And we're going to drag this in to get, and we're going to actually make this public so we can change it in the editor as well. Just saves us having to type stuff out. I did this originally by linking up the name directly to this part or the level name, and it didn't work. It wouldn't find it for some reason. But I figured out that if you do a if we do an enum to string and then we plug that string in there, it'll make an enum to name or a string to name, and then that'll actually load our level for us. So if I hit compile, save, and then we go into our scene, you can see in the bottom right we can actually select our levels. So we're in level two. When we press the button, we want to go back to level one. So we're just gonna make that set there. Hit save. Now we go to level one, save it again. We'll drag in our blueprint, place it just in front of the player. And we can set this one to level two. So now if we actually do a test, I'm going to launch mine. I'm going to do a test. I'm going to launch mine to the headset. So we jump into the headset. We should be able to see our cube. My hands not in my face. Yep. So we go close to it. Now we touch the top, you see we can actually switch between levels. That's a bit too high, but we can go back and forth. Now we can set up the screen fade. So how do we set up a screen fade? We're already firing the event in our motion controller. So that's all we have to really do in here. We might add a delay in a little bit just to make it a little bit longer and to let it load better. But you can see in our motion controller, we've got these events. So that's being fired by this. So code comes through, sets the material, fires this, then loads the level. We're gonna fire this, which triggers this. So fade to black. And to do this, all we need is, I say all we need, we need a couple of nodes. We're gonna start by creating a timeline. I'm gonna call this fade to black. Actually, I'm gonna call it fade timeline because we can copy it in a bit. So fade to black, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open that up and we're gonna create a function. And in this function, we're gonna create two keys. So you can do this by right clicking anywhere in the, the graph, add key to curve. And we're gonna set these to zero, zero. Oh, zero, zero. Then we need to determine how long our fade's gonna be. So fade in and out. I think three seconds is probably going to be enough. So we'll change that to three and we're going to add another key. This is going to be at one second. So one, no, nope. I always get these the wrong way around three, 
and then one. So it takes, it's going to go from a value of zero to one, which we're going to use for the alpha channel, which is going to control the fade. We're going to need a node called set color. Set color scale offset. And you can see that's actually from the Oculus library. And we're going to drag off our color scale and we're going to go make color. Actually, we need make linear color. Just so I remember. And then we're going to hook all of these up to our track. Hook it up to update. And then we're going to plug our event fade into reverse from end. So it's going to go from zero to one. So it'll play backwards. It'll go from one to zero. Yep. So that's fade in. If I get these wrong, we can always switch them around, but that should be it for that one. Then all we're going to do is basically copy and paste this code. Actually, what we can do is because we're not changing anything, we can just do this one from play to start. So we've got fade to black. So event fade to scene, it's going to fire and then it'll actually fade the camera. The event fade to scene will start. That's going to play from the start, which will go from zero to one. I find that fades it in. If I get this the wrong way around, we can always flip them over. So we're going to hit compile, going to hit save. Now, if I do another build, I'm doing quite a bit of, quite a few builds just to show you the process of how it goes. So I'm going to do another build and then we'll just test that that's actually working because we might have to switch them around. So now we jump back in the scene and then we hit the button. Nothing is happening. What if I messed up? Okay, so this, this should be working. This is absolutely fine. I'm going to hit save, compile. Our switch is doing the fade. What we need, I, that's why. Okay, we need a delay. We need a delay in here to match our screen fade. So our screen fade is three seconds long. I'm going to do it to four just to give a little bit longer. You can actually do this to yeah three. That'll give enough time. Now if we hit compile and save now, I think that was just my code messing up. I'm going to do launch again. So we jump back in. Let's see if this works now. Yep. So it was just the delay. So you need the delay in there to make sure it actually does it. And you can see we're just stuck at black. That's because we're not actually telling the project to load back into the scene or scrape or fade back in. So we're going to do that now. So how do we fade in? Pretty easy. Exactly the same way that we did this. So we're going to copy our, actually we don't need to, it's fine. We're going to compile, save. And what we need to do is go to our blueprints, open our level blueprint. And in here, we're just going to use an event begin play. So event begin play. So when the level starts, we're going to fade back in. But we need a delay as well. So if we do it immediately, so we start the fade back in immediately, it won't actually work very well. It does like a, a skip and then misses it. So we're going to do a delay of 0.5 seconds. And then we're going to call our fade to scene and we're going to do the same thing that we had before we're just going to use our get player pawn and we're going to plug that in now all we need to do is copy this so i'm just doing a control c i'm going to hit compile save now we load in our second level maps level two what am i doing Maps level two, blueprints, open level blueprints. Then in here, we just paste that code back in. Hit save, compile. Now that should be it. If we go to launch, project launch, do it one more time. So we're back in the scene for the, the final time. So we hover over it, we fade out. Then we fade in didn't move the cube 
And then if we go back, you see we fade back out. And then we fade back in. So that is how you do a fade. Rather than jumping away, if you wait a second, I'll go back through I'll go back through the code so you can just get an understanding of what it is we've actually done. I know this video has been a bit all over the place, but I'd rather show you the better way to do it than just the fast way. Let's jump back over. Let's open this up so we get our windows back. So what have we got? We have an interface which has our two functions, fade to black and fade to scene. Then we have our motion control pawn, which has both of our new interface functions or events. We've got fade to scene, which is play from start. We've got fade to black, which is reverse from end. So it goes from one to zero and then zero to one. Yep. We're making our linear color. So we're actually changing these values using the timeline timeline. So it, it's updating as it goes, which is how it's doing the fade then we're just setting the color scale to the offset. But we're just using these events to make it easier. So that's literally all it takes for to do a screen fade. You can do this with triggers or just normal commands, but I thought I might as well show you the better way to do it and more efficient. So that way we can actually place loads of stuff in the scene and we don't have to go in and do manual screen fades or anything. It just, it's gonna work as long as we call these events it'll work. You get shot, fire this event, I don't know, kill an enemy, fire this event, pick up an object, fire this event, you, you name it, as long as you just call this fade to black or the fade in, then it's gonna do your camera fade. So we can highlight that, see, camera fade, and that's all it is. I hope this made sense, if not, then all you need is this, but if you want to do it with an interface so you can control it wherever you are or whatever level you're in, then this is the, be the better way to do it. Hey everyone, Jonathan from the future. I'm just editing this video. I just wanted to jump in and say thank you for watching this far and watching all the other videos. It means a great deal to me. Um, this might be new, but I've actually recently start started a Patreon so I can offer more content through that and bring it more regularly if that's something you'd like to support there's a link in the description you do get access to all the project files that i'll do from now on into the future i've also got the virtual reality star wars video so the entire project for that is available through the patreon now for a fiver so if that's something you want to check out and download then that, that's how you can do it um i wanted to do a shout out to Sean Ty for being my first Patreon. Thanks, thanks, dude. And if you're new to the Discord, I'm actually offering one-to-one -one tutoring on the, the Patreon itself as well. So if that's something you're after for quest development or you just want to hang out and have a chat, then that's available too. So look forward to seeing you in the next video, which is going to be level streaming. So if you're interested in that, stick around. And that will also be on the Patreon once this video goes up. So, until then, stay safe. I'll see you then. Bye.